Let's get started, everybody. Shio Ganali, Holiday Simmons, Dakwa Doan, Ji Salagi Ale, Black folks from the Mississippi Delta, Jinella Atlanta, Ski Ale Wado for joining us today. My name's Holiday, I come from the Cherokee people and Black folks from the Mississippi Delta. I make my home in Atlanta, former Creek territories. And um, thank you so much for joining us today. We're gonna start off with a um, opening prayer and then we will get started with introducing ourselves and getting started with this panel. So I'm gonna turn it over to uh, Mary Crow, also known as Missy. Um, we'll just take a minute to uh, acknowledge creator and say a little prayer before we start this. Most yes. kind and gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for another beautiful day and for all the many blessings that you've given us. Creator, we ask that you watch over everyone, Lord. Pray that you just be with those who desire our prayers, those who are sick or in conflict or in sorrow, especially during this trying time. We ask that you lead and guide and direct our walk and lead and guide and direct our talk as we go forward here today. Bring the wisdom and the words that we need to share with everyone so that we can bring comfort to one another. These things we ask. Amen. Hello, everyone. My name is Mary Crow. I'm a member of the Deer Clan, member of the Eastern Band of Cherokee, living on the Koala Boundary. I reside in the Yellow Hill community. And my next team is there. I uh, just wanted to uh, thank you all for coming today. I wanted to um, um, express to you. Um, our gratitude for taking the time to join us to uh, sit and listen to um, the words and advice that we have to bring to you. you give us just a second. We got our baby's having a hard time right now. It's quite all right. You know, for you all to um, understand that um, we come to you in a humble way today. We come to you in a manner of um, being as one, uh, being one in this human race. We're seeing today that um, we're being forced by creator to become one. This is affecting everyone what's happening with us today. So I just wanted to thank everyone for coming and just wanted to introduce myself and give that prayer and I'll uh, let the others introduce themselves. All day I'll give it back to you. Awesome, thank you, shit, it's key. Um, I'm going to let the other panelists introduce themselves in a moment. I just wanted to um, <clears throat> ground everyone in um, what this uh, conversation is uh, about. Um, it's called Indigenous Wisdom from the Mountains, and it's going to be at least part one of at least two, possibly more series. Um, and it's uh, was hosted by a Campaign for Southern Equality, and it's a part of a larger webinar series we have called The Front Porch. Um, tomorrow we're having a trans um, health webinar, uh, and Friday a haircutting, barbering webinar. So um, stay tuned to all of the programming we have during this time, and uh, we'll be hearing from other folks from the Koala Boundary later on in the month as well. So uh, that's part of what this series is. And I'm gonna pass it over to Elvia um, to introduce herself. Chio, uh, Elvia Dolanosti, Dagwado. I'm from Cherokee as well. Um, I am a pre-K teacher at New Padua Academy here, which is our immersion school here on the Koala Boundary in Cherokee, North Carolina, and I am so grateful for being given the opportunity to do this, and we're excited. Ah. And Lisa and Ganu. Ganu go God, Jill. My name's Lisa Montalongo. I'm from the uh, Yellow Hill community. I'm from the Long Hair Clan. Uh, and this is Gnu Goga. This is my great niece. She's part of our family. Here. And uh, we're so happy to be a part of this uh, panel and to uh, participate in this. I appreciate the offer of uh, being a part of this and, and sharing with our other relatives around the world, too. Yeah. Awesome. Wonderful. Well, I am just over the moon about this panel. These are my relatives, and I feel like every time 
we text each other or, or like each other's pictures or spend time together or do ceremony together, I am made that much more um, whole and that much more better. So I feel extra grateful to um, share some of this wisdom with you all. Um, and I'll just be moderating the conversation today. Um, so we're gonna kick into, um, you all already introduced who you each are. Um, can you just tell us a little bit about who, who is the, uh, you're all Eastern uh, members of the Eastern Band of Cherokee Indians. Where is that located? Um, how did your, your nation come to be? Just tell the folks a little bit about who you are and where you are, please. Okay, yeah, I'll, do, I'll take that. Um, the Eastern Band of Cherokee is one of um, three federally recognized tribes in the United States. Um, uh, we have the Cherokee Nation of Oklahoma. We have the uh, United Gadua Band of Oklahoma. And then you have us, Eastern Band of Cherokee. We are located um, in the Great Smoky Mountains National Park, um, right on the Tennessee, North Carolina state line in Western North Carolina. Um, our land, 56,000 acres, lays uh, west of Asheville from um, Swain County, Jackson County, all the way down to Cherokee County. We have checkerboard uh, parcels of land from here to Murphy, North Carolina, which is about 55 miles away. We are, are a member of about uh, 17,000 strong. Mind you, half of us probably live here on the Koala boundary. The rest is living um, all over the continental U.S. and abroad. Um, to be a part of the Eastern Band of Cherokee, you have to come from one of the 13 families after the Civil War. Um, we were um, probably about 1,200 people here, our people here, along with about 200 Catawba. And um, everyone wanted us to go to the West with the rest of the Cherokee, but we were uh, afforded to stay here because we actually bought our land. We purchased um, our, our, our Kuala boundary, the 56,000 acres, not once, but twice. And we actually hold deed to, to the land here. So uh, we all hold it in common. There's only one deed and every enrolled member uh, has possessory holdings of uh, parcels of land of the 56,000 acres. In that we cannot sell to anyone outside of our tribe. The land that we have, we can only sell and barter and trade with uh, enrolled members of the tribe. In that, um, like I said, we are a um, very um, um, strong um, group of people here in Western North Carolina. And as much as that, you know, we, we do own, you know, um, a couple of casinos. We are one of the biggest employers in Western North Carolina. Um, our casino here, as well as in Murphy, North Carolina, employ over 3,500 um, employees. 15% uh, of them um, are um, Cherokee or of other uh, Native um, ancestry. But the majority of the employees at work are um, non-Native. So we are an equal employee opportunity, you know, tribe here. Um, we um, also, you know, do a lot of uh, our traditional we still hang on to a lot of our traditional ways, our cultural ways. Um, we are gatherers right now. You know, we're spring gathering. There's a lot of stuff going on here in our mountains. Um, we also, you know, have um, our own school system. We have our own hospital. Um, we are a sovereign nation. And that is uh, being um, evident today, right now, as our principal chief shut the borders down to our boundary. And so there is no one, if you're not an enrolled member of our tribe and a resident here on the Koala boundary, then you cannot come to the Koala boundary at this time until they lift this, um, this uh, coronavirus and uh, all these um, emergency responses that they've given to us. And so to know that we are a sovereign nation, to know that we have that right to protect ourselves by closing our borders, it has been effective. And so that history from, you know, the time of remo removal up to the Civil War to where we are here today, you know, we, like I said, are 17,000 strong and we are still protecting our mother town, Gadua, is um, our, our, our part of our people. Gadua is the mother town of our people. All of the Aniyawiyan, the Cherokee people, come from mother town, which is 
here in Western North Carolina, here not more than um, uh, five miles down from um, our main base of the Koala Boundary. We did purchase that 20 years ago, and hopefully within the next year, that land, our mother town, would then be put back into trust into our people's hands, which I hope at that time we'll have a real major celebration because all this time, our mother town has basically been controlled by non-native people. So we're, we're really hoping that within the next year, mother town, the property that we purchased would then be put into trust federal trust lands like our main quality boundary. So just to give you a little bit of a snip of um, our history and where we're located. Thank you. Ski, Missy, thank you so much for that. Um, I'm gonna um, kick the next question over to Lisa. Um, I just, and, and I actually, all, I would love for everyone to answer this, um, but we'll start with you, Lisa. Um, how have you been, um, yeah, everything that's going on the past two months, month and change with coronavirus, um, how have you been feeling? Uh, how have you, uh, what are some of your fears? How have you been taking care of yourself and your family? Just starting real small with you personally. <laughs> well, I'm, I, I work from home, so... Um, I didn't even know this was really going on because I hadn't really gone anywhere. So uh, it's, uh, I've been really um, uh, afforded, a, I'm blessed to be where I'm at today. I'm truly, truly blessed to be here and to um, be able to um, know that we're safe. And, and we got Ganu Goga who wants to show off because I'm, on, I'm online right now. So uh, excuse us for a second. <laughs> But this is what this is what keeps me straight right here. <laughs> uh, um, it's really centered me. It's a uh, 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 with the the coronavirus going on. It's um, made me realize that that we have a um, that we can center ourselves. That it's okay. Uh, life's not ending for us, but it's a new beginning. And it's just how we're going to uh, approach those new beginnings with our family because we have an opportunity of being home right now with our families and uh, uh, reconnecting. My family, I was working and, and making sure that they were in daycare and doing all these things. So to have that privilege right now to be home with my niece and to be a part of her life uh, and be her teacher because these are important times for her. Um, um, I'm, I'm, I'm excited. I'm excited. Yeah, there's, there's a, a, a disease going on around out here, our coronavirus, but at the same time, we can protect ourselves from that. And that's staying at home and uh, being aware of our surroundings that are around here. Like Missy said, it's springtime. So we, uh, here in Cherokee, we have a lot of our, our natural herbs coming up. So I've been drinking a lot of tea spending a lot of time outside a, a lot of time outside and um uh with my family with with my neighborhood because you know even though we're we're a stay at home we still have neighbor i live in a neighborhood so i have neighbors across the street from me or or down the road so i see people um uh, walking with their children and, and spending that time and taking them into the woods and uh what a blessed area that we really come from you know, we're really blessed to be placed here in, in, in these mountains with the medicine that surrounds us. And it's really just about reconnecting with all those things that we disconnected from, because I know we all, all, all have done that, mm -hmm. you know, in our, our lifetimes. And now it's time of a reflection and reflecting on those things that we learned from our mothers and grandmothers and grandfathers and stuff. And, and uh, how, how those things changed and took us onto this fast pace that uh, was actually destroying our world. So to see Mother Earth uh, 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 shake, shake us up like this and make everything come to a complete stop is, is pretty amazing. It's pretty amazing to see the clean water and the clean air and the, and the fresh air. We have a lot of fresh air now. And um, 
it's it's I think it's just a, a, a real time for reflection and meditating and, and um, looking out for our neighbors and okay. what's what's going to be our, 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 our calling next you know what 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 are we going to be looking at in our economy for our community not for the globe but our economy for our community so those are just reflections that I like to look at and and uh, and for our children you know what 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 are they going to be looking forward to um, as we come out of this themselves just like this little one you know what it, what's her world going to look like I don't know but I hope to be a part of it and 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 to uh, be her guidance into what we need to do and, and to ensure that she understands what Mother Earth is and why why we do these things that we do do because a lot of us have lost connection to 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 uh, our purpose in life and we're, we're all given a gift as and that gift was life and we just have to find our purpose and now this is that time of reflection of what our gift is in my gift right here god brought her to me and so so i'm privileged to be here and to share share my world with her and her uh, and to uh look forward to going forward with her. <laughs> And the rest of my uh, grandchildren, you know, I haven't been able to see my grandchildren. I miss them, but I know they're okay because they're only a mile away from us, you know, a mile away from me. But there's other people that are further and further from their relatives. So I like to send prayers and hugs to them to, to ease their burden at this time because it is a, a, a scary thing to go through, I guess, if you're alone and you don't have no one. So I'm sending prayers out to our relatives that are struggling right now with their anxiety. So, um, but that's, you know, thank you for again for uh, letting me be a part of this panel. I don't know how much wisdom I'm bringing, but I, I think I'm, I've earned it sometime, you know? I'm 56 now, I can't even believe it. <laughs> yeah, dripping with wisdom, just dripping with wisdom. <laughs> Thank you for that. Um, Elvia, we'll kick it over to you. How's this time been for you? Um, how, what are some things that you've been grappling with? Any fears? Um, and also, how have you been taking care of yourself? Okay. Um, the first week or so, I um, let my anxiety get the best of me. Um, that was a really hard thing to work through. And I knew, I knew better. I know. I mean, whatever. Anxiety is what it is. It, and uh, people who don't have it don't understand it so don't get your advice from them um but uh it's been humbling and it's also been like she said resetting um all these things that we've been taught up until this point um i feel like a lot of us you know we're trying to put it in action and really trying to live these things but what it's done is just basically slapped us in the face and we're like why are you what what's they're trying about to it you either are or you're not and so this is kind of uh what that is is just the wake up like everybody's saying um <clears throat> it's been really humbling to um check all my feelings all my angers past angers and um i don't know there was a lot of stuff going on before we ever got to this point within my own nation and uh, it kind of brought it all what what's important and it's not that casino is not important and this is what's showing us that um this is this is a i hate to say this is a good thing because it's not a good thing but it's a wake-up call that we all needed and if this is how it had to be this is how it's going to be because we've been warned before this so here we are and um what's really grounded me was talking to my parents and talking to people in my community and then just seeing the people in my community um doing the most for each other in the best of ways with the best of intentions um that's so inspiring because like again i had guilt about all my anxiety because i couldn't get out there i wouldn't i there was different things that i was going through that didn't allow me to do these things and so oh yeah don't touch my face um and so like this is kind of just showing me that like where 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 i'm standing and where i want to root myself in my community and how i want to do these things moving forward um i like i said i was work i working i work with the new Kudu academy our um immersion school it's something i'm super proud of it's like the best thing i've ever done in my life actually and um 
yeah this is this is showing i'm being able to pray in my language and i feel like i'm like creator made sure i could do that because that's what's helping me realize that this thing we're gonna this is okay because i can we can do these things and we're gonna do these things and we've been taught these things and we've actually been prepared for this for a long time and now it's just time to to grow up this is what this is for me and the end of the day because I've been talking to my siblings and my friends about stuff we've talked about before, but not this deeply and not with truly understanding and actually not with the time and the effort that we should have been talking to each other before, because we've been allowing all these things to control our life, like this 40 hour work week, this casino that's 24 hours, you know, we, we subscribed our people to that. And so now this is showing me that although we have these things, we have this money. We don't have a garden for our community. So how sovereign are we? How prepared are we to take care of our people? And this is our wake up. And this is how I see it in a good way. So yeah, <sighs> right now I'm just talking, 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 talking. That's what I needed to do. And, I, mm. and I'm so in love with everybody for being willing to let me unload these burdens because they are heavy, but then also helping me just let them go. And so mm. that's what I'm doing right now. Mm, so grateful. Thank you. You have me going to church over here. Um, <laughs> Missy, Missy, I'm going to um, ask you a two-part question. The first one is the same one. How have, how have you been doing since this um, pandemic and uh, you know, any fears that have come up and how you've been taking care of yourself and your family. But go ahead and uh, slide into also how has the, has the tribe been? What measures has the tribe taken? You had already mentioned that you closed the, the border there. Um, but yeah, give us your own experience and then go ahead and slide into what uh, measures the, the tribe has been taking. Yeah, um, I have, um, children, I have four children, um, ages 23 to 17. Um, my two youngest are still in high school. One's a senior, one's a junior. My daughter Ella, you know, is going through, you know, quite a bit right now. One's starting about, you know, graduation. She's in musical theater and they had to cancel their, her last uh, musical production. You know, she, that, that's her, that's her dream to, you know, be on the great white way one day. But, um, you know, just to be able to sit and talk with my children. My oldest daughter attended UC Berkeley and uh, we actually was able to get her home, um, you know, uh, before it hit the West Coast real bad. So we're, we're really blessed and thankful for that. My son uh, also came back home too. So I have a house full of uh, young adults and the conversations have been pretty, pretty interesting. Um, and as much as uh, being, um, I'm 58, I was born and raised here and seeing how it is quiet and calm. I remember these days back growing up, we didn't have, you know, all this uh, 24 seven, you know, casino. We didn't have, you know, people running all hours of the night. I told my kids because they said, oh, everything's closing down at eight o'clock. And I said, well, back in my day, everything closed down in October and didn't open up until April, you know? So, you know, to, to, to see our kids now, you know, understanding that um, how we've evolved so fast, even though it seems it's only been 20 years, you know, in that 20 years, we have been so dependent, you know, and and more so on, on uh, as my daddy said, we're like a pig, bunch of pigs. We don't look up to see where the slop's coming from. We're just gobbling it up. But guess what? You know, uh, creative, you know, the, the slop's slowing down and everybody's saying, hey man, you know, where's it at? What's going on? So it's made everybody, you know, look up. And that's what I had to teach my children is that now you have to realize, you know, what I've been trying to explain to them. Number one, how do you hold your peace? And I, and I tell them a lot about the um, serenity prayer that a lot of the um, people in recovery go through, you know, grant me the serenity, you know, the change that I can, you know, within myself and, you know, and to be able to change you know, to understand the things that I can't, you know, change, but to have the wisdom to know the difference. And so with my children right now, I'm telling them this is the time that, you know, we have to understand that we can't control what's going on around us. We can only control ourselves. And so as long as we learn how to stay in our peace and how to stay in, in our calm, 
you know, because everybody else is going crazy and going, you know, losing their minds because they've never had to do this before. So to teach my children how to be patient is another thing. You know, these things that, um, you know, they, they, they want to go meet with their buddies and they want to, you know, they still want to go and do the things that they were sociably in and they can't even do that now. And so trying to get them to understand, hey, look, you know, this is serious stuff. We have to really pay attention and, and we're blessed that, you know, we, we, we haven't been and we haven't felt that full brunt of, of, of what the majority of the urban areas are feeling right now. So, you know, with my three and I, you know, being able to sit down and discuss, like Elvia said, you know, we're having deeper conversations now. We're, we're, we're talking about, you know, what do we do from here? Because it's their future, you know, they're, they're young adults. And so for them to go, you know, from here on out, how, how are they going to perceive this world? How are they going to prepare themselves for the future? Um, because we are going to have a future. And um, right now, um, in the short term, it's uncertain. But in the long term, you know, where, where, where are we going to go? How are we going to just transition? And that's a message that we talk about a lot in the work that we do. How do we just transition back to who we are as original people in this original setting? Because when we've allowed ourselves to get privileged and get, you know, so spoiled that, you know, we, we forget our own basics. How do we get back to that? And so when we talk about just transition and the work that we do through the Indigenous Environmental Network is to allow our people to know, especially our Indigenous people, to know that it's okay. It's okay to go back and to be who we are. Matter of fact, it's the only thing that we have that will probably save us from what's going on and we're seeing it here now in in this area you know right now the last report that we had was that we had 38 um tests that were done on the qual boundary 28 of them came back <laughs> negative 10 of them are still pending and we did have one confirmed case but that individual was a part-time resident and they were asked to go back to their state and so as of right now, there is still zero cases on the Kuala boundary. We do have our borders, you know, shut down. You can only come in one way through 441 after 10 o'clock. We do have a curfew from 10 until 5. It's been, you know, it's being really effective. And so for, for us here on the Kuala boundary, like I said, we're, we, we, we have to do that because right now, you know, our hospital is not capable uh, to, to take care of it. If we have any cases, they get, we're, we're referred out to the, the next county, to the next town, which can be anywhere from 15 to 50 miles away because we don't have an intensive care unit at our hospital. We only have 18 beds at our hospital. We have no ventilation, ventilators. We have none of that in our hospital. All the specialty care that we get, we have to be referred out to, like I said, Silva or Waynesville or Asheville. And these little towns and cities are 15 to 30 to 50 miles away. And so if any of ours, it's one thing to have this and be isolated in a city, in a hospital that you can't go visit. But for us, if any of us get it and we get sent out of here, not only are we isolated, but we would probably be miles and miles and miles and miles away from our families. And so right now, like I said, we're blessed that we are sovereign where we can shut our borders. We closed our casinos down. The casinos are closing down for another two weeks. You know, our schools are closing down for the whole month. You know, we teach in a manner of like, like my niece, she's with the, the language academy, with like the, the, the Gadua language academy, which takes our babies like the new go gun, you know, from birth on up and teaching them the language and stuff. But what they're doing now is sending videos and, and recordings and stuff, you know, so so that the kids can, you know, keep keep hearing the language, keep hearing that while they're not being in that schoolroom setting. And so this also gives us a time and we've seen a lot of it 
where our families are taking their children out into the woods to gather. We are, we are now gathering our spring mountain salad, which is your ranch, your sochan, your legget, your, and, and you know, all the green mountain salads that are coming up right now until probably the end of April. We'll be out gathering our wild green mountain salads, and we call that good medicine because that's the, that's the natural foods that builds up our immune system, that keeps us healthy. People think that when we talk about Indian medicine, that, you know, the Western type is you don't get medicine until you're sick. Well, the way we say is our medicine is to keep you healthy so that you don't get sick. So when we talk about our medicine in the mountains, we're talking about the plants, we're talking about the herbs, the mushrooms. We have so many mushrooms here in Western North Carolina in this area. And um, to be able to know that those are natural, God-given things that grow in our mountains here that we have to protect. That, that we have to do everything that we can to number one, to get the people around us to understand how important our area is. You know, the Great Smoky Mountains National Park is one of the last biodiverse areas in the world. And less than three months ago, they reported that they found two, no, 20,000 new species in this area. And so when you look at reports like that, when you look at how they reintroduced the elk back here, what, 10 years ago, and, and which, is, which is, you know, indigenous to this area, they have thrived so much that now we see more elk here than we do deer. Most of our deer, you know, we, we don't see deer. You don't see deer much in public as you do, even though we do have them. But we have so many um, elk here today that, you know, it'll stop traffic, us taking it to school. So, so to see that, to see us living, you know, cohabitating the way we're supposed to with the four-legged, with the wing, with, you know, with the two-legged. We're all supposed to work together and we're all supposed to maintain that balance. And right now our earth is out of balance. So we hope that, you know, what we're doing here on the Koala Boundary will, you know, allow others to, you know, um, uh, use us as an example. If we can help anybody, we're, we're, we're more than happy to do that. I'm, I'm a trained first responder and, you know, a resident counselor and a group individual counselor. And so my job when there's an emergency is to go. And so, you know, that's another thing that, you know, we're asking our communities, especially those that have had training in first aid, those that have had training in, you know, uh, uh, emergency response training, whatever. Uh, um, we have so many nurses, registered nurses in, within our tribe. But because we only have a limited space at our hospital, they are having to go elsewhere. So, you know, these are some of the things that we, you know, are reaching out community-based, you know, grassroots. You know, our tribal government has, has a lot to deal with, you know, on that, on that level. But here within our community, you know, we're, 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 we're messaging each other. We're checking on each other. Do you need anything? Uh, my niece, you know, and I traded, you know, canned vegetables for some pork chop and some bread. Hey, you know, so, you know, when we start having to do that barter trading doing like we did the traditional way um we're getting some good uh, responses back from a lot of our community members that are saying that they are taking their children they're going back and they're doing a lot of you know traditional things with their families which is good so i hope uh, that gives a little bit of indication of where we're at here absolutely Scheme, I Missy. I thank you so much yeah, absolutely. Um, um, Elvia, I'm going to actually throw you uh, another question and you can answer, you can say whatever and then kick off into this other one, um, which is the last one for all of y'all um, before we turn it over to questions from the audience. But um, Elvia, af after you say what you're going to say, could you also just, um, yeah, just any um, tips or, or uh, gems that you want to share with people um, especially folks who maybe um, are in cities, um, maybe uh, are not living near their relatives like y'all, um, or, or any other circumstance um, that you could, you know, chip, bite off a little piece from, from the mountain wisdom and share with us. 
Yeah, this kind of goes hand in hand too. It's something that has come to my attention and something that I'm really, again, it, it's humbling me is understanding where our people are starting from at this time. Um, we all, even just, oh, for example, in our language acquisition, we're all starting at different um different levels for different reasons not one of them is wrong not one of them is right um it's not anybody's fault it's not your mama's fault it's not your grandmother's fault there's a lot of different reasons why creator has brought us these experiences to lead us to this point so i think it's important that we are gentle with each other um within my own community i know there's some people i don't want to see people shaming people for not knowing how to gather not i'm really proud of a lot of my community members that are uh, posting videos to help those because again colonization clone this colonial world that we that's been forced upon us has, has caused these things and it's not anybody's fault like, i mean we know whose fault it is but um i think it's just very important that we're mindful of that moving forward um i myself i, I i'm very careful in what i'm saying because i don't want people to think that I think I know it all or I'm some medicine woman or anything like that. But I know my experiences, I know my life, but I know who taught me. So I do understand um, uh, the responsibility that I have when I'm saying these things. So I, that's one thing I want to implore my own people, be gentle with each other in this time because we have to have each other. Um, our own prophecies and our own language, our own stories told us of these times. So just be gentle with each other and take care of yourself. Um, I, I posted this on my Facebook this morning is that right now we're being told we have to take care of ourselves. You have to take care of yourself. It's not, it's not, uh, there's no, no, no shame in it. It's not shameful to take care of yourself because you're mimicking this in front of your children and your children need to understand that this is very important, especially in times like this, because this won't be the first time we're going to go through some stressful things as a community. And so right now we're having to learn these things together. Again, it's a, kind of like a shocking way to have to learn it but we're learning it regardless creator creators you know he, he tried to tell us where we got here right, so right. here we are um and i just think that right now uh it's such a beautiful time it's it is scary i'm not i'm not you, it, it, it there's no shame in moving forward uh, being scared that's okay but just making sure that we're moving forward always in love and gratitude even if you're scared to make sure that because your body can't I'm speaking for, from experience. Like I said, I spent the first couple of weeks locked in my room. I live with my dad who is a speaker who has heart problems. My mother is a cancer survivor. And I took it really hard, my responsibility of even being around them. And like I said, my anxiety caused me to lose my shit for a little while. But um, it also helped me focus. Once I got over it, you know, I, I focused a little bit more on that. And so, I just think it's really important to make sure um, my people that if you're if you don't know and there's no shame in it ask because there's so many people that want to show us and there's so many people um, the plants are trying to talk to us so it's very important to uh, understand that all these things that we were taught in school in a colonial school whether it be tribal it was still clone it was set up by a colonized system they told us that like some of this shit was like make-believe it was fairy tale to, to do these things and it's not and so right now we need to be making sure our children understand that you need to talk to these plants as you're gathering them let them know what's going on and why you want why you're coming for them and um i myself i i um i personally had to apologize for them for coming to them in this in in this way but um, I know that they know my heart. I know that they um, they understood where I was coming from. And so I just wanted to point that out when you're doing these things to be mindful in that way. Um, yeah, that's the, that's helped me the most is uh, just understanding my connection to these plants, to our plants. These plants know us. They knew our relatives. So it's not like we're like we're just they're just meeting us for the first time they, they they have their instructions like we have ours and we're the only ones not following it right now so we just have to be mindful of that when we're moving forward and being intentional from now from now on we don't have the options anymore we don't have the choice well you have the choice to which road you want to go down but i don't we have to be mindful and intentional from here on out <clears throat> mm, 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 mm. LVA, we're having a whole praise team over here. Several people are dropping, <laughs> several people are dropping in the chat saying that your message is healing right now. Thank you so much. 
et cetera. Um, and, and I co-sign on that too. Yes, yes, yes. I was uh, just trying to do a little note taking over here. Um, yeah, you, you said some things. It's okay to be afraid. The plants are trying to talk to us. Uh, there's no shame in your decolonizing process. Thank you so Slow much. Slow down. Slow down. Slow it all the way down. And I, this is something too, um, with uh, with the jobs and stuff. I know we're only in control of what we can control. My tribe can only control what, what or my tribe can only control what our, we, we have our hands on. So I think too, just for our employers to understand whenever you're telling somebody they need to justify working from home, my justification is taking care of my family and making sure that I am doing what I need to make sure that my dad, whom was a speaker, is as safe as I can ensure. That's my justification. And there's no shame in that either. And I think that needs to be said mm -hmm. over and over and over again. Take care of yourself and your family mm -hmm. and your community will follow. Mm -hmm. Beautiful, beautiful. Thank you so much. Um, I'm gonna swing over to you, Lisa. Um, any follow, uh, not so much final, but final in terms of this particular part of the panel. Um, just uh, <laughs> words of wisdom for folks. Um, uh, things you want to share in terms of managing health, emotions, time, resources. Oh, sorry, I think I got you muted. Hold on one second. <clears throat> yeah, should be good. Okay. Yeah, um, right now is a, a real uh, critical time for us. So um, just like Al, what Alvia was saying, you know, just slow down, take those deep breaths and, and um, reach out to your neighbors, reach out to your community and um, share those garden spaces. Uh, uh, everybody's getting ready for, for gardens. Everybody's getting ready for, for, for uh, the spring. So uh, while we're home with our children and stuff, enjoy your children, reconnect with them. You know, I know that it, it is hard. It's hard to, if you have one, but just could you imagine having four like I did, all little like that at one time? So, you know, um, um, reach out to our relatives and our sisters and our uncles and brothers that are raising children that might have three and four and five children, be patient with them and, you know, take their children for a walk. Uh, these are different times for a lot of us and uh, people are talking about homeschooling. We always knew how to homeschool. We just got comfortable with our regular schools and sending them. So, so um, I, you know, I hear a lot of stuff like that on Facebook. So, you know, we, we were always the original teachers. You know, we always had that structure in our family. We just got to reconnect with that and, and be patient with ourselves so that we're patient with our children because Sometimes we didn't learn those uh, skills, and those skills is to be a good parent, and to be uh, uh, to talk to your children, to to soothe them, not to holler at them, but to soothe them when, because we all make mistakes, and one of the things is that we were those children at one time too, and and um, so so the, those are the new skills we need to learn is to to uh, be that parent with our teacher uh, with and teaching them those natural things that we were always given, those gifts, those gifts and, and that language, because that's one of the things I'm learning now and being home with Kanugo guys, uh, taking on that, that, uh, that uh, challenge of being her teacher now. You know, even though I'm not a fluent speaker, I'm gonna learn because I, she knows so much that I don't know and I don't want her to lose that. So uh, utilizing our, our web pages and, and singing music to her. I appreciate uh, Alvia and Tamara for doing some videos that I've been, I play for her every morning. I, I try to get music for her and, and entertain her with music. And those things with our children and counting with them and, you know, just really spending that quality time, you know, that quality time that we have that time now. We always talked about it and now it's here. So, um, enjoy it because um this is what we have and this is what we need to 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 realize is that it's, it's going to be okay but to really reach out in within our communities and in our neighborhoods and and help with those children that are having a hard time be that good neighbor check on those children too because some of our children uh aren't in healthy homes don't, 
don't come from those healthy homes. So we have to be that, those community members to be, uh, 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 to uplift our children. I know I'm having to do that around in our community. So, uh, and everybody knows what goes on uh, in their communities with, with families that are struggling too. And, right. you know, take them a food basket. Right. You know, help them, help them, especially those little children that come over and play and then they have to go home. You know, send them something home. Right. You know, and share that because they're going to remember you as they grow up and, and remember that kindness that somebody did care about them. So, so reach out to our families and our, and our loved ones and those ones that you got disconnected from, try to connect with them. Uh, that's, that's what I can, um, you know, bring to the table and ask because we all suffer from those ills within our own community. But uh, um, this has brought light in, in that uh, those discussions and those dialogues around our tables and, and um, really connecting with our family members right now because we have to uphold one another and lift each other up. And it's garden time, so it's time to get out there and get our nephews and our nieces out there to help us start sealing and put some seeds in the ground. That, that's the wisdom that I can share with you is that it's springtime and it's gonna be okay. You know, just take care of yourself, take care of your family. You know, say your blessings. Yeah, we forgot to do those things, we, but we know about them. Get up with that that morning morning light and get up, set your tobacco out. I remember those things, you know, my mom. I remember those things. So it's just like um, and, and doing those things. I do them with her. I do them with Gnu Gnu Goga because she likes to get up early. So uh, <laughs> we're we're morning risers. We're up about five or six. So we, you know, we try to and I try to share that with her. I really do. I'll take her outside and let her see the moon and the stars and stuff like that so that she knows what we're doing in the morning. And I know that, that there's an understanding with our kids that if we get them going early like this, that, that they'll always remember that because I remember it with my, my mom doing those things with me and, and doing those things with my children. So so those are things that we can do right now is, is to love our family and to, to, to really help with our children right now. And, and share with those little ones that like to get wild. Take them to the woods. Let them walk. Help their parents out. They're not hyper. They just want to be outside. Yep. <laughs> Absolutely. I think it's important, though, to say that right now we're not living in normal times. And uh, right now what, they're, what we're being asked to do is totally against what we've been taught to do as indigenous people in my family. And that is to not go and visit these things and that's that's a really heartbreaking thing to um do right now but it's important and i think that we need to point that out to our relatives not just in our not just in cherokee where we we're not we're not equipped the whole country's not equipped to deal with this shit so i think it's important to be mindful and do not be taking your actions out of boredom um I I had to go back to what my parents used to tell me. You don't ever want to tell them that you're bored because there's always stuff you could do at home, always stuff you can do in the yard. So I think that we need to point that out is um, we are a very, very vulnerable community. And so we need to be responsible. People my age, people that do have these healthy immune systems, be responsible in decisions that you're doing. Um, I think that uh, that's one of my biggest concerns right now. And it's like that everywhere. I'm watching what's happening with the Navajo Nation, our Diné relatives, and that shit is heartbreaking. Um, because, you know, you're hearing these stories about these gatherings and a lot of people that don't have the opportunities to do what Eastern Band can do and should be doing. And that is take your three weeks, stay at home, get your garden started. Uh, let's let's Skype, let's FaceTime, guys. Let's 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 interface with each other right now in these ways that we haven't had the time and opportunity to do that. But please stay home right now. Do not look at it as a as a burden because it's not. Creator's given us a very very special opportunity um, to do these things, and we should be taking advantage of it in a good way. Um, not again. Not everybody has what we have. Not everybody, even in our own community, I've seen some people judging some other people for not being prepared. But we're also we don't we don't we don't start at the same level, so we just need to be mindful of that. But stay home, please, guys. Right now, uh, we have the outdoors. That don't mean stay in your house. We we have we, look where we're at. We 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 live in paradise, 
And so we have this opportunity to learn more about um, ourselves, our homes, our communities, our own families. And I think that we need to be making sure that we're doing that. So that's one thing I really, really, really wanted to stress to my community and my people is like, it's so important. I need you just like I need my dad, just like I needed my grandma, just like I need my mom. And so in order to ensure these things and ensure that we, you know, we're safe as we can be, we need to be staying home and we need to be um, mindful of that, why we're making our decisions to go in and out of the boundary. I think that it also makes it dangerous for us, the way that our sovereignty makes it dangerous for us because there's a lot of communities that were racist before this. And they're not liking the fact that we have this opportunity to close down our borders. Um, some of them wish that their leaders would do that, and that's not something that we can control. But what we can control is our interactions with them. And so I feel like us going in and out, some of the people going in and out, like kind of not taking this serious, upset some people. And that's going to hurt us whenever we have to send our people to these hospitals. And I just want our community to be aware of that. Um, yeah. The world needs us. The world needs indigenous people. So we have to protect each other right now. Mm. Our, our own teachings, our own prophecies tell us that we need to be doing these things because they need us. We need each other. So just be smart. Be smart. Be smart and act out of love. Please. Thank you so much, Elvia. Thank you. Um, mm, just need a moment to let that trickle down to my toes. Um, so grateful. Um, we were just about to open the chat up for questions. Um, and actually it's open, we have it open. Um, and, and I just want to kick it off with um, a question, just riffing off the last thing you said, Elvia, you mm -hmm. said, you mentioned um, the surrounding communities have always been racist. Uh, what is the, what's the climate, the social climate, political climate of, of the towns and the counties around the Kuala boundary? Um, I, I'll answer, I, I don't focus on that too much. I, I was raised in it, I, I'm very aware of it. It is what it is, it's there, it's gonna be there. Um, uh, but I do see that this isn't gonna help. I do see that. Um, it doesn't help. So, I mean, I'm just, I'm not, I'm being realistic about what it is. I don't, I don't know if it's any more, any less, but I do know that if it's there and they have to share ventilators with us, I wonder who they'll choose. Got you. That's all I'm mm -hmm. saying. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Appreciate it. Um, let's see. We got a, someone is uh, requesting that y'all share your video from Standing Rock. Hey, we can make that another webinar. That would be great. I was actually just getting ready to find that link real quick and okay you're gonna drop the link in there okay yeah. cool um hey jesse <laughs> uh let's see i don't think there have been any other questions yet we had a, a notice a message from joan park saying that they live in the same area grateful for the mountains um as well now i got all kind of questions for y'all but i'm gonna see if any of these other 30 participants do There's a link to their documentary from Standing Rock. I love you, Jess. I do, I do want to do a shout out to just everybody in Cherokee doing what they got to do. Uh, Lisey, my cousin who works in the pharmacy, Clarence out in Idaho, works in the grocery store. I love you guys. Be safe. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Shout out to my bestie, Melanie, who's a firefighter and is risking her life every time she goes out there. Because they love the people. Mm -hmm. Okay, y'all slow on the question, so I'm going to jump back into my question. Um, so there's been a lot of different um, demands of different government bodies um, during this time, how our our systems are being responsive to their to us as people, um, from rent strikes to requesting um, governors uh, put a hold a hold on um, on uh, well we did actually successfully push back um, taxes are now due in July 
um, instead of in two weeks. Um, mortgage, some folks are getting their mortgage sort of um, in, held off for a minute in forbearance. Um, asking, definitely asking folks who are incarcerated uh, to be released or um, at least to be uh, given the proper care so they're not um, being uh, put at risk by wardens and by each other. They've, uh, folks incarcerated have also lost the, um, the right to visitation, you know, so, and, you know, everyone's quarantining, so that also means you can't go visit your folks inside. So my question is, um, um, have y'all, has, has the, has the tribal council made any efforts to like, do is your rent, uh, do you still have to pay rent on April 1st today? Um, has, or your mortgage and, and things like that. Um, anything that uh, the organizing bodies and the infrastructure is, is doing to uh, be a little bit more gracious with people at this time? Yeah, I can answer that. Um, the principal chief did um, issue some executive orders this past week. Um, in that manner saying that, you know, um, any house payments, rent, uh, mortgage payments would be put off, um, telling them that no one could be evicted, uh, water payments, stuff like that. Even our courts have more or less closed down. So they were more putting out, you know, uh, tentative right now, some tentative remake schedules for our courts. So yeah, our, our tribal government and our principal chief and our councils are are basically doing, you know, in line with just what the United States government and governors and mayors are doing in their towns and cities. So yeah, that's what that's what we're doing here with the Eastern Band, and um, um, and we do appreciate that, you know, a lot. We are a we are a small community, not just here in the in the main base of the Koala Boundary, but in Snowbird down in uh, Robbinsville. Um, in Graham County, which is about 45 miles, and then down, like I said, in Murphy in, in Cherokee County. And so, you know, those those communities, even our communities there, you know, are having to deal with, you know, the counties because um, here in the main body, we've only got three roads that come into the main part of Cherokee, our main body of the Koala Boundary. The Great Smoky Mountains National Park is totally closed, which is Highway 19, or Highway 441. Highway 19 across Soco from here to Maggie Valley is closed. So when you look at, you know, how we can close our borders completely, we can here. But then our tracts of land on down in, in, in Snowbird and Murphy, they have to deal with the counties and the towns that live around them. And some of the towns are completely shutting down, you know, their town uh, city limits. And then there's some that's not. And so, you know, um, to see the, the, I guess the racist remarks that came when we closed our borders and told no one that they, you know, unless you were an enrolled member, you couldn't come back in. You know, some of the comments out there, especially, you know, when social media was that, well, if you can't come, we can't come uh, on your land and you can't come off. And, you know, these are some of the things that, you know, we're sitting going, whoa, you, they have no clue as to our sovereignty and who we are still, still here in Western North Carolina. And so, you know, to, to hear those types of, of comments, you know, coming from outside people, not understanding that, you know, um, out of the employees that we do have here, like I said, um, over 85% of them are non-native. They're being taken care of by our tribe. You know, they're, they're being taken care of. And so we're not, you know, saying that you, you that, you know, we're, we're um, doing anything, you know, different than what any other country, any other state, any other county or any other city is doing to protect its citizens and its community members. And so that's what we're doing right now, too. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Um, I'd like to applaud the chief on his effort um, for flexing our sovereignty and understanding how to use that. Um, I'm really proud that of what they've done to step up for the community, allowing those that are tribal workers to stay home. Um, I, I'm aware that it doesn't come from a infinite source of money that we're going to be able to continue these things, but I'm, I applaud that they're doing the most that they can at the moment right now. And, um, yeah, I was really thankful for that. And to one of the comments we wanted, we wanted to tell, and I wanted to say this, is just basically the comment that, 
you know, we hear a lot of people saying that, you know, we're stuck at home, we're stuck at home. And, you know, one of the things we're saying is, no, you're not stuck at home, you're safe at home. And when we start, you know, trying to change those, that mental attitude is how do we perceive these things? You see what I'm saying? You know, what, what do we need? You know, what do we need? We need to be safe and we need to be healthy, but what does it take to be that, to meet that need? Then you have, what do you want? You see what I'm saying? And a lot of times people want a lot of things, you know, but I just want people to understand that life is sacred, that we have to start understanding that we all have a connection on this earth that we all have a, a responsibility to this earth and that we have allowed ourselves. We've all allowed it. I have too. I have to apologize every day for allowing myself, you know, to, to get caught up in certain things or to get torn, t taken away from, you know, that, that center spot that I'm trying to create for, for myself as, as an individual person. Because until then, you know, I can't go out and help anyone if I'm, you know, you know, confused and, 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 and scared and, 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 and not knowing, you know, what might happen. And like I said, that's, that's part of being, you know, raised in a, in a family of, you know, a mother and father that, you know, were foster parents. I used somebody asked me, did you go into a military? And I said, no, I was, I was raised by a man that was in the military. And that was my dad. He used to say that he ran the house like a ship. You know, you got your chores done, you got the things that you need to get done, get your wood cut, you know, get in the garden. You, you know, we had a, a, a running, working home growing up. And so to see that now, like today, you know, that's like me and my son and, and my kids getting out and, and, and cleaning off the garden and me being able to talk to them, you know, they were, they were fortunate enough to get to spend some time in the garden with their grandparents. And I'm thankful for that. But when we're down there, we, 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 we regenerate those stories and we, we, you know, we, we start bringing, we calling our ancestors. We always call our ancestors back. It, we're, whether we're cooking, whether we're sewing, whether we, someone in our family that was a great sewer, like, you know, my mother, my mother-in-law, Grandma Nora, you know, they were great sewers. And, and now my niece, Elvia, you know, she's kicking out these killer ribbon skirts, you know, that, that you know, we call, call in our ancestors, the ones that, you know, had given this, 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 this gift to. And so when you're out there and you, and you learn something from someone and you're out there and you get yourself, you know, call them, call them and, and, and draw that strength from your ancestors that, you know, someone taught them, someone taught you and someone taught that and it goes on down and we do that, you know, especially like when we make chestnut bread. You know, that's one of the things my cousin says uh, when he teaches, you know, to how to make the bread. You know, we call in all the, all the good chestnut bread makers in our family because not too many people can make good chestnut bread. And so, you know, when we, when we do those things, when we, when we honor those things, um, those traditional ways. And like Elvia said, a lot of our people were forced to assimilate and acculturate and we were told that our ways were wrong. We were told that our, our, our ways weren't, weren't the right way. And uh, so now here we are, we're, we're, we're in a state, you know, where everyone now has to look and actually recognize what is it that they need today? What is it that they need tomorrow? And what will they need in the next coming weeks, right? Whereas to what do you want? You know, I want to be able to, you know, go further than, you know, my yard. I want to be able to go further than, you know, to go visit. To be, yeah, we want all that, but, we, but, we're, but right now we can't. We need mm -hmm. to understand the, the difference between what we need and what we want. And so that's what I'm asking the people out there, especially in our community. And if you see a need, if you see a need out there, we know the people in our communities, we know the people on our streets, if you see a need out there, you know, uh, don't hesitate. You know, it, 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 it doesn't have to be a whole lot. Sometimes it's just a knock on the door and just saying, hey, how you doing today? You need anything? And so, you know, if we, if we, if we can start, 
you know, I take that back. Shouldn't knock on the door. Hey, call it whatever. But you know what I mean. Try to to be able to let our relatives know that that we're going to be okay and we'll be okay together. Oh yeah, I think that's important too. Like she said, <clears throat> the wants and the needs. What do we need to do so we can get to what we want to be doing? <laughs> mm. We need to be staying home. <laughs> I want you guys to be safe. I need you guys to do these things in order to ensure that my mom's safe and my dad's safe. The same way I'm doing what I need to do to ensure that your parents are safe. It's we're so interdependent on these things as we've always been. It was just it's it's in time to remember these things. And it's not funny, but it's funny because it's these are things that we know. These are just things we're gonna have to put into practice now. You don't have a choice. We don't have a choice. That's my thought. I know we all have choices, but this ain't a choice. We gotta take care of each other. Absolutely, I love it. Um, Elvia, from now on, you're Pastor Elvia. Um, <laughs> I'm Bishop, here, Amen, corner. Amen, Elvia. <laughs> there was a, a question here, um, a little bit uh, ago, saying, um, "Do you all have any readings to suggest to us that can help expand our knowledge of how to connect with the land during these times?" I will uh, just give a little preface answer to say that that's actually going to be our part two of this webinar, uh, Wisdom from the Mountains. The part two is going to be about plant medicine. Um, so this is one place. Um, do y'all have any answers to that question? Can you repeat it one more time? The question was about books to learn, but I think y'all have expressed that you've been learning from experience, not so much from books per se. But the question is if you have suggestions for books um, for people um, to help expand knowledge on how to connect with the land during these times. A lot of it is uh, right at your fingertips. Hey, Google it. <laughs> <laughs> Google's your friend. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I get told that all the time. And, and when I told my uncle that, he's 85 years old and he laughed at me and he said, that's what the kids say because <laughs> he was wanting to get out his bread maker and make his own bread he's 85 years old you see what I i'm saying that. you and can always know, keep learning can't you yeah always and then yeah. you know and that's why you know we always have to you know allow our 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 relatives to know out there one thing that we talked about and uh, we went to an organic uh farmers uh or, or excuse me an organic growers conference um a couple months back and one of the things we explained to them are that the plants are the only thing that will come to your doorstep to help you. Hmm. Anything else coming to your doorstep is not to help you. Don't open the door. <laughs> <laughs> the plants, the plants, see, you, your plants. If you was to go outside and might yeah. be, you're in an urban area, right? Yep. And you see a dandelion? And what does the majority of the people do to dandelions when they see them in their manicured lawns and everything? They'll take the ground up and kill it, don't it? Well, that dandelion's some good eats. That dandelion no, has some good medicine in it. When you look at um, coming outside and we're talking about plantain, you know what plantain is, right? That's right outside your door, too. And you can use plantain for medicine also. When you walk outside your door and you see a cherry tree, you know what? You can use that cherry for teas, spice wood. We're going to have, you'll see wild blackberries coming up all over the place. And some of them might be on the bank behind your house. In the next couple of weeks, they'll be putting out white flowers and a bunch of briars hanging over. And they'll have pretty white flowers. Guess what? Those are wild blackberries. Go get you some. They'll be coming out probably about the second week in June. So see, when I say that plants come to your door, when we, when we're talking about how 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 they're all around you, and so when you see something, that's what I'm saying. You can take a picture of it, Google it, and you can take it and you say, hey, what are the what are the 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 benefits of that plant? And it'll tell you, right? Pretty quick than grabbing the book. But if you want to grab a book. You can go to most of your um, health food stores. Um, I honestly, if I was to recommend anything, um, 
Lisa's got a book right over here. What was the name of it? Um, they said the one that she likes to, Gnu likes to get it out, and Elvia took a picture of it and um, with Gnu playing with it. But it was just basically um, uh, an herb. Just go and get you an herb uh, book. Uh, go to your health food store. You know, go and just go and look. Um, most all of them will tell you every plant, every herb, every mushroom, everything that's out there that, like I said, would probably with it be within a 10 mile radius of you if you don't live in an urban city area. That's the main thing. Now you'll find it in your urban city areas, but you would have to go to that health food store. You see what I'm saying? But once that happens and you take it back to, to your house, you know, it's, 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 you're preparing it just like if you was to take, get out in the woods. Mm, yeah. Awesome. Um, Got also, one more question. Uh, oh, sorry, Elvin, go ahead. I was just reading the question about how do oh. you um, be better neighbors um, during the pandemic. Um, particularly indigenous communities honor and respect that their borders are closed and there's a reason for that. Um, we're all sharing resources all throughout the country, but Indian country stands alone in <laughs> oh man i don't know if we stand alone but we're, we're just vulnerable so just respect their wishes and also do the things that they're doing you stay home whether or not you're the leadership in your town or whatever is making these calls you know better so um not waiting for um a town to shut down before you start staying home would be something that could help everybody not just our own communities but honoring and respecting their decisions to have their communities closed and the reasons that they have them closed um would be the best thing you could do and to explain that to um other people be a good ally in that way explain it to people who don't understand and why that's important um i think that's a big thing to do <clears throat> but also in the bigger picture knowing that okay so in our creation stories and stuff like that you know the at one point the animals and the, the plants did talk to us and we talked to them we had that connection again we were all, we were gifted these things and there's reasons why we don't have them um and it's for stepping away from our original teachings but um there was a point where we got to this where we had gotten greedy and was taking too many animals and so the animals decided to create diseases for us but the plants took pity on us and they said you know that for every illness that they were going to release they were going to help us and give us a cure and give us some medicine for that so just remember that whenever we're going through this while we have indigenous nations all around the world trying to protect what little resources that we've been allowed to fight for and been allowed to keep and to fight and to have um support them in that because the plants told us they're going to help us and if we're going to allow all these people to come through and wipe out what we have left and what what little we fought to hang on to we're all responsible for that, not just indigenous people. So support them in these things because these plants are trying to help us and we can't wipe these out. We, we've wiped out a lot already and that's how, why we're here. So I think that's another thing that we need to focus on, being allies to all indigenous people, um, protecting what little resources that we have left. Mm. Oh, and final words from you, Auntie Lisa, um, as we wrap up this, ever so rich panel oh gotta take you off mute hold on okay what was the question just any final words from you uh any final words yeah i'd just like for um thanks for everybody for tuning in and for your work holiday and making us a part of this panel so that we're able to uh uh, express our, our feelings and stuff here and what we're going through in our own communities. Uh, sending out prayers for all our frontline workers and remembering all our frontline workers that are out there. Uh, praying for Indian, everybody, but mostly for our Indian countries and our Indian communities that are suffering because um, there's not enough uh, protection in our own communities for our own people right now. It is, it is uh, important uh, for us to, to uh, protect our communities right now, wherever we may be, and to um, shelter and stay at home. 
but at the same time that we're staying home, we still have that opportunity to go outside and be a part of that fresh air. Don't forget to go okay. outside, sit in the sun, you know, and take in the, that, that natural beauty around you, the fresh air that we're being, um, that we have right now. And, and just looking at the different news reports of everything that shut down and how people, uh, the air is, and Mother Earth is, is uh, rejuvenating itself. So um, take those times to um, sit outside and prioritize your, what your, your uh, future is going to look like with your family. And um, um, get ready. Get ready for the future. Because we do have a future. And that future is with our families and, and reconnecting. And um, uh, that transition, we are going through a transition, no matter what anybody says, this is a transition period. And how you... How you uh, participate in that transition period is up to you individually on, on that wellness and that wellness that you're going to share with everybody, or either it can be that uh, doom and no hope. But I have hope for the future. I have hope for our families and our children and all of us moving together as, as one and as whole and, and bringing our relatives into this uh, circle. Uh, we were all given teachings. It's just uh, um, kind of like dusting ourselves off again and, and, and opening our eyes and our minds and our conscience to those things that we're, we were given but that we set aside because we moved on in a, a, such a consuming uh, way that was happening in, our, in, in, in America or the world that, that this, the, the consuming of everything and trying to, to, uh, to move like they were is not part of us and we've never been a part of that so it's humbling it's humbling and it, it feels good to be free i don't know what i um i i feel free so uh and and um so i i i'm sending a lot of uh good thoughts and hugs and vibrations to our people that are that are struggling right now that's that's mm -hmm. the main thing is you know let's 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 help our people that are struggling and send them good vibes and, and good thoughts and when somebody needs somebody to talk to let's be there for that person that's that's struggling so that maybe they they, they, they won't have such a hard time and they can center themselves because they, they're here for a purpose too and and um we're all looking for that and some of us are lucky that we had our our relatives here to to instill these yeah. these teachings in us so uh, I like to send all my blessings out again, you know, and prayers to our frontline workers and all our people that are struggling to, to uh, for their next house payment or their next bills, to let that go, take a deep breath, because we've got another 30 days to think about it. And then after these 30 days, how are we going to approach that when they're offering to, to cut these mortgages and stuff? But at the end of this 30 days, are they going to remember that uh, we're not going to be able to catch up to this 30, 60, or 90 days that this goes on. So that, that's the next issue is, is uh, uh, for our people that are struggling and making house payments and mortgage payments and rent and stuff like that is yes, they're giving us another 30 days, but at the end of those 30 days, are they going to forgive that so that we start anew when this mm -hmm. economy does wake up mm -hmm. again and open up again? So mm -hmm. those are just some of the issues that I, you know, um, um, like to leave you with is um, count your blessings, and I know it's hard. Share your food, share your food, but stay safe and and uh, social distance. That social distancing has a lot to do with it too. But remember to have compassion for your community and your people that are struggling or that don't want to adhere to these mm -hmm. to these things that are happening around them. Mm -hmm. Uh, so th that's what I'd like to uh, leave as my final message again. Thank you and everybody that joined us this evening to be a part of this panel and to listen to who we are and to listen to what's going on here in our own community. I appreciate you giving us your time. Oh. Hello. Thank you, y'all. Thank you so much. Thank you for.